Can we start by having you show the process of preparing your body for an interview? Sure. Uh, I can do it right now, as a matter of fact. The first thing that I would uh, think about is just to become aware of myself from my head all the way down into my sits bones. And I might move my legs a little bit so I can feel my joints and then get a little bit more forward so I can feel my feet, so I can be grounded. And then what I would do is I would check my head-neck relationship right here. And what I may do is just gently look down to the floor and then very gently free my neck to look up a little bit so I can feel that relationship with my head and my spine. And then I might just bring my whole body forward like this and then back. It reminds me being on a horse. So when uh, horseback riders are perfect students of the Alexander technique. In fact, Alexander was a horseback rider. So now I might put my hands like this to the side of my ribcage and do something called the whispered ah. It's a way of calming my breath and calming my nervous system. And then what I may do is instead of letting a whispered ah, I may just do some counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then what I might do is two uh, sets of tens on one breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that gets me going, my breathing mechanism, and I am aware. This is something that would be great to do it just before you go on set. So many of the actors that um, I work with, they might do something like that. I have, th uh, this is a quick warm up. I have, uh, for example, in the book that I've written, I have many different warm ups. You said leaning forward, and that is not just the head leaning forward with the neck, it's the entire body. The entire body. So uh, you might have noticed that when I leaned forward, I was continuing to lengthen my spine. And this is something that animals might do. They may just lean a little bit forward, getting ready to attack, or they're, they lean forward because they're interested. So they, they are, they're, they're like pointing. Um, dogs do that beautifully, right? You know, they lean forward and maybe one paw goes up. <laughs> and what they're doing is they're just looking or they're listening or feeling the moment. You know, it has something to do with that. You had said something about it's a perfect exercise for an actor mm -hmm. just before they go on set. If they don't, if an actor does not have, let's say, their own room, how would they find a space in the chaos of preparing? I love this. Uh, yes, actors will find a little corner in the movie studio set away from the action so they can do some of this thing. And luckily, uh, <laughs> the crew is usually used to seeing actors do very odd things to prepare. You know, you sometimes hear, well, so-and-so, they were very standoffish and they never mingled with the, the crew or the other yeah. cast. I always feel like maybe they needed their own time to prepare. 
Absolutely. Uh, every actor has their own way of preparing and they may do different things. Uh, Alexander will help them to release a lot of tension and to connect them to the breath and hopefully with uh, the character's intention. So, and then that there is the, and I will speak on that in terms of how does the character come to life? How do you embody with your whole being the character? Is this a routine you do every day? Yeah, well, it is a way of living. This is the thing about Alexander that is quite different from so many other methods. You use it in the act of life. It blew my mind when I first heard this. I said, that makes sense. If you really want to change the manner that you use yourself, how you use your breath, how you move, how you stand, how you sit, or how you work with computers, or the, um, how you handle a camera, right? You begin to integrate it into your everyday life. Of course, you can't think about it all the time. You would probably end up in a mental institution, <laughs> but there is something about it becoming real in your life. So then when you are in front of a camera, it's not so hard to access it, you see? Or if you're on stage in front of thousands of people, you, it, it's a lot easier to um, integrate it and connect with it. The other methods I watched for the Alexander mm -hmm. Technique were uh, lying on the ground with the books and then the knees to the sky which I tried before the yes. interview and it was wonderful. Oh, good. I wasn't sure if I was using the right amount of books, so yeah. I tried different ones. Is that something you also try on a daily basis? Yeah, I do that. I do that. Uh, it's called a semi-supine or a constructive rest. That's what I call it. Or some people call it active rest. It is a way for you to ease yourself uh, and use gravity as a way of allowing all your bones, especially the spine, to ease into the floor and to become aware. So you learn that awareness or living in your body, it's a very lively event. It's not, it's not closing your eyes and getting really serious, not, not at all. It's not, it's not like a hypnotizing yourself into it, but it is a, an illumination of how you feel. I like, uh, I like to call it illumination because it feels clearer in terms of where your spine is between your head and your spine and, and the legs and the arms. And we have such a thing called directions that we use to direct our bodies while we're let, lying down. I heard one woman say she just felt lighter. Like she, she used to be a dancer mm -hmm. and she said, as she got older, she didn't feel like she was moving correctly. She just felt lighter in her life, everything that she was doing. So there, there is that. There is that. I actually, I wanted to uh, appeal to my, um, to here. What, what gets us down are habits. The habits of our everyday life. You know, try, just the idea of trying to get it right or trying to do something well, will tense the neck automatically and will compress your head back and down into your spine. So these are some of the things that we are dealing with that are very, very habitual. And to me, dealing with the habitual and learning to shift it consciously is a very empowering and where you go from there, from the habitual, you go then into the extraordinary, meaning that you're living outside of the force of habit. And that's what actors, that's where they want to be. Because usually, you know, scenes are, especially important scenes like turning points, are uh, scenes where the character changes. And you do want to be free in doing that. 
So you're really telling the truth and you're in the moment and there's something that it's hard to put your fingers on because it's the thing about transformation, you know, and it's going to be different for everybody and everybody's going to do it differently somehow. Do you find some people uh, are more rigid than others where it is almost impossible to get them to relax their neck, relax, you know, whether they had military training, or whether they yeah, yeah. do, you know, accounting work and they're just behind a desk all day? If someone, usually people come to me because they want to change. So they've come to a, a, at a state in their lives that if they don't do it, if they don't change, they realize that they're going to be like that or worse the rest of their lives. So they're very clear about wanting to change, right? So they're in a, in a prime state, right? They want to learn something different. Um, <clears throat> in terms of rigid, yeah, yeah, military, someone in the military might be a little bit uh, um, reactive and uh, fighting a little bit. But I've, I've been surprised. I've had football players with necks like this, with muscle, and I will put my hands on them because we do use our hands to help people. And somehow they release their necks so much. And they have a very, very uh, heightened experience. And it's emotionally very moving to see someone like a football player releasing completely their necks and, and breathing and, and getting a little bit longer and lighter, as you said. And uh, so, yeah, it, um, or someone very old, you know, that they're completely collapsed, that after a lesson they are, they are able to move very uh, elegantly and easily, you know, and they haven't done that in years. Can you explain what collapsed means and how does I can that happen? show it to you. Okay. I can show it. Collapse has a lot to do with a lack of consciousness, right? So if I, if I uh, allow myself just to go with gravity right now, I will become an old man really quick. So this is where I am. And as I talk to you, I will talk to you like this. And my voice is getting a little bit in my throat here. <laughs> and I look quite old now and kind of tired. And pretty soon you probably end this interview, <laughs> right? But if I can just release my neck and allow my head to regain a little bit of length and to come forward from my hip joint, somehow I, I become a, a bit younger and more vibrant. 